Welcome to our lecture about jQuery and the document object model. So we've already been talking about some vanilla JavaScript where you have a script tag and you do document.write and, and we've already seen how that can update a, a web page that in the process of being downloaded. Now with, with jQuery, well, that, that, that's been around for a long time, for since 1995 when JavaScript was first created. But ultimately we are starting to see more and more of the interactivity of our application being done in the browser. And so it's being, we're writing more and more code in JavaScript. Um, our classic request response cycle, we do a click, it goes in through urls.py, picks a view, maybe talks to the database, pulls a form in, and out comes some sort of HTML plus JavaScript comes back. And, and if you do a view source on a page, that's what you're seeing. And so the browser, when it receives that, is it parses it and turns it into what's called the document object model. And that is a data structure that in a sense lives one pixel behind your screen. And then you see the results of the document object model. And so if you do a view source, you see the response, but if you do an inspect element, you see the document object model. And so what you see is you see how the document object model can change. And the way the document object model can change is by you writing JavaScript code that does something to the document object model or reads the document object model. And so there is, it's, it comes, the JavaScript comes in as part of the response from the server, but then it starts to run. And then when it's running, the, the, in a sense, you're completely caught off, cut off from the rest of the server. You've got your response, but your JavaScript can still be doing work in the page. It can have events that trigger, it can modify the DOM, it can intercept clicks, and run some JavaScript, et cetera. So like intercepting a click, intercepting a click is like, that's an on click, which says run a little bit of JavaScript and then come back, right? And so we can even intercept a click, do something to it, and then stop the actual sending of the data to the server. So JavaScript is in a very powerful position in, in your browser. It's in your browser and your page can be sitting there. And increasingly, we're starting to see folks build more and more of their application in JavaScript and less and less of their application in, um, in Django or in backend. And so what we're finding over time is that the JavaScript is kind of talking to the models directly. And we'll talk about that in the next lecture, right? The JavaScript talking to the models directly and then putting stuff up on the screen rather than going through the entire request response cycle to get a page back. And so this is hybrid application. So, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna really talk and focus much more on this interaction between JavaScript and the document object model. So the document object model is a concept that's been around for a very, very long time. When JavaScript was created in 1995, in order for it to have access to what was on the screen and change what was on the screen, which was its goal, it, we needed a way. And so they create this variable called document and the document is always there. And then you call methods and change attributes. And then you get back elements like a paragraph is an element. And then you can change the color of the paragraph and you can do all kinds of things. You can even insert uh, new paragraphs. And in 1995, as the browsers were saying, do I want to add this JavaScript? They actually already had document object models, but they weren't the same. And so the idea that all the browsers would agree on one document object model, that just was not practical at that time. Um, it caused for a lot of pain from 95 to 2005, 2006, and we'll talk about that. But the document object model um, has never been, every bit of it is not forced to be a standard. And so we have parts of it that we make be a standard. So in the first part of this, we're gonna talk about not jQuery, but instead what, what the world kind of calls vanilla JavaScript. And that's sort of JavaScript that the browser gives us versus JavaScript that we can write if we have the jQuery library installed. So we're gonna talk a little bit about vanilla JavaScript. So one of, the, one of the choices they made back in the day was in order not to have to look at the DOM directly, we would just say, look, bypass all the shape of the document object model, which was a hierarchical set of trees and tags. Say, look, we're gonna put this ID field on a tag, and then we're gonna give document.getElementID as a way to look up and get our hands on a tag, and then do something to that tag without having to work our way down from the body tag to a 
UL tag to an LI tag to a paragraph tag to a form tag and work your way down and through the tags. And so it's a it's like a jump right into the DOM, get your hands on something and do it. And so the actual shape of the document object model tree was less important. And so here is a really simple bit of code. Um, and so, here, so what we've got is document. Okay, so document is always a document. Document.getElementID, and that's this method that was added to the docu document object model. And then you can look for the a particular a particular tag that has an ID a person on it. And so in our HTML itself, I've got this span tag with an ID a person on it. And that is my handle to get my handle on that span tag. Okay, so I can do a console log of that. I can get my hands on, you know, here is the whole span tag, document, get element ID person. And then inner HTML actually pulls out this little bit, of, little bit of text. So I can put a console log out and I can put it high there. And so you can see that in this JavaScript, I was able to pull out a little piece that was in the document object model. And then if you see, I can also then change it. So I, so I can get my hands on the document object model, inner HTML, and I can put that on the left-hand side of an assignment statement, and then I can change it. <clears throat> and so this is what it looks like when you are console logging that get element ID by person, or get element ID of the person tag, the one that has ID equals person on it. And so you'll see in your console log that it's an object with lots of attributes and lots of methods. And this is, again, the document, this is just one little corner of the document object model and all of the things that we can do to that document object model bit. So like I said, you can change the document object model by putting it on the left side of an assignment statement. So what we have here is a real tiny bit of JavaScript and the pattern I'm using now is I'm using the onclick, onclick attribute in a tag. And so this is a way for me to make a, a anchor tag that you can click on and have it so that it actually just runs some JavaScript. So it's not really gonna send it to the server. The return false in both of these says, don't actually, I've, I've, in, I've intercepted your click and I'm gonna handle your click and I'm not going to let it go to the server. I'm going to do something. And I, as this piece of JavaScript, have decided that I have satisfied whatever the user wanted to happen on this click. But that's what return false does. But before that, I'm going to sort of go grab the document, get element by ID by stuff. Well, that's this bit right here. And then enter HTML, which is this text. And I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite this and put the word back here in there. So if you click on back, it's going to look like this because this got overwritten and it's now back. And similarly, if I click on fourth, then it's going to go find this and set the inner HTML and rewrite it again. So in a sense, the, the pixels of the browser that you're seeing, the pixels of the browser you're seeing are fungible, they're modifiable, they're changeable by the JavaScript. The JavaScript can change what you see. And so it's, it's a very powerful position to be in. The whole page is parsed and read Right, the whole page is parsed in red, and then it shows you the page, and then you have registered a couple of event handlers. When this is clicked, let me run some code. And in that code, I'm gonna do something to the screen you're watching, and then I'm gonna say, you know what, I don't even want you to click on that href. I don't want you to go anywhere. I'm, I've handled it, etc. And so that sort of shows you this sort of read-write aspect of getting to and from the document object model from vanilla JavaScript. So here is a even more sophisticated little example. And, and in this example, you're going to see how you can actually modify and extend the document object model and add whole, whole areas to the document object model that was not there before. So if we take a look at this code, and you can, you can go and run this on, uh, on DJ Free, um, I've got a little link here, more, and I'm gonna call this add function and return false, that's just so I stay on this page. And then I have an unnumbered list, and that's going to produce this first item. Okay, 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start some JavaScript. I'm going to have a variable, a little variable called counter. And so I, I just do this, this is a debug. Um, and function add, that just sort of defines a function. And I'm going to call that later when I click on it. So it's, when this page all is complete, it only shows first item. Now, so that's what's there. There we go. So first item is there. And then I click on more. So when I click on more, it runs this on click, which calls the add function. And what it does is it says document create element. And so what that does is that creates an li tag, slash li, an empty one. And, and it's not in the document right now. It's not on the screen. It's just like in a variable. So I've made an HTML tag that's an li tag. And then I can do things like set its class name, which is class equals, if I want. And then I can set its inner HTML to be the counter is counter. And then I'm going to add one to counter. So it starts out at one. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab document get element ID the list, which is going to grab me this tag. And then I'm going to append a new child tag, which means I'm going to insert this little li tag that I just made right be at the end of that, right before the end of that UL tag. And so when that code runs, the little, the little counter equals one line shows up. And then I can click it again, and counter equals two shows up. And I, there's, there's nothing going on with the server at this point in time. I am simply changing what the browser sees by changing the document object model in JavaScript. And so there, there are some places that you would use something this for a purpose. I'm just showing you how the document object model can be modified by what you want to do in JavaScript. And you can make new tags and stick them in. It's not just changing a bit of text, but you can put whole new chunks of tags. And frameworks like React and other ones, that's what they're doing. They're actually completely changing and messing with the tags. So up next, we're going to talk about uh, jQuery and how jQuery has made this act of messing with the document object model a lot easier.